uh, in the word of testimony tonight. Amen. Our testimony reads as follows. Blessed with a job, there is a man who has testified about the goodness of God in his life. He had never been formally employed in his entire life. He used to hustle in order to support his family. He then trained as a security officer, but the certificate took longer to be released. Pastor Robert prayed for the certificate to be released, and it finally got released. He managed to get employment afterwards, and he has just started with a new job. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Every morning at 6 a.m. from Monday to Friday, we have our morning prayer, which is at 7 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Our midday service starts at 5 to 12, and then we have our evening service, which starts at half past 6 every night. Our midnight prayer starts at 5 to 12 every night, and we also have our weekly prayer and fasting which is on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. The details of the fasting are shared on our different WhatsApp groups. Amen. Amen. Tonight we will get the word of God from the book of Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 4, NIV. It reads as follows. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the scene will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Heads of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kedah's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along the clouds like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me in the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing your children from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I strike you, in favor I will show you compassion. Amen. 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 Okay. Also tonight we will have the privilege to go through the word of God together and the word of testimony tonight. Amen. Believing the word of God to be taught with power. Power of the Holy Spirit, power to heal, power to bless, power to protect. Um, I just have one, or, one testimony or two testimonies. Because sometimes when God do something in your life, he may be doing it for you sometimes. Amen. But sometimes God may be doing whatever he's doing for somebody. Amen. Sometimes you think God is doing something for you, but sometimes it's actually somebody's testimony Amen. that God is doing to encourage somebody. In the morning, I had a thought. I, I It only began with the thought, that maybe I can get another position. It was just a thought. It was a thought, okay, maybe I must get another position. I must get an ad, maybe. But you know, it has been about in this, I know I've been here last year, but this year, this is, I think tomorrow is going to be exactly about five months when I'm this side. Then I saw somebody saying that they are looking for, for an engineer. And maybe just to start a conversation, I said, ah, okay, I'm looking for you. I'm interested in the position. 
Then the person is like, can we interview you today? Ah. But because I was not really serious, I'm saying, no, I'm busy with the interviews for the Engineering Council of South Africa. I'm a panelist. I'm in the middle of interviews. I'm interviewing people. If only if you want to interview me today, you can try to interview me after one o'clock. Uh, I thought that was it. Then in the afternoon, I see the HR personnel from that company saying that, uh, can we interview tomorrow? I said, okay, you can do so. You can interview to me tomorrow. And the other one was like, uh, are you interested? Just, are you interested? They are looking for an engineering manager. Are you interested again? I said, ah, okay, you can try. You can, in I'm interested. But am I really interested? In reality, not really. I'm not really interested. It was just a thought. But anyway, we are to choose. In our our family, we are to choose. Amen. That's who we are. We are to choose. We are not. Uh, job. We are not after jobs. Jobs are after us. Amen. And some of those things ma needs to manifest so that um, we can encourage one another with something tangible. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is my testimony. Amen. Okay. Amen. Let us go to the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse number 4. I usually say that sometimes, you know, just sometimes God does things so that somebody's faith may be encouraged. Amen. When you hear that somebody's testifying next door, that means you are next in line. Amen. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you are Amen. next in line in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse number 4. The Bible says that lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble come and come to you. Your sons, and, your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the hip. The Bible says that. Remember... When you start very well in verse number one, the Bible says that, Arise and shine. Your light have come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. That means first of all, the Bible is saying that, You are time for God to make you shine and arrive. Amen. And the Bible said that you are time for God to make you shine has arrived. And the Bible said that the reason why God said that your time has arrived, the Bible said that this time is because the glory of the Lord is rising upon us. Amen. You have sought the Lord. You have been after God. As the Bible said that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse number 13 the Bible says that you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Somebody may be saying what is the use of finding God? What is the use to live in the presence of God? What is the use to live in the power of God? What is the use to live in the glory of the Lord? When the, you are living in his glory, when you are living in his power, once you have sought and you have found the Lord, after that, the use is, you will arise. Amen. After that, you will shine. Amen. You will prosper. Amen. You will be successful. Amen. You will be great. Amen. You will be unstoppable. Amen. Seeking the Lord is just the first part. Living in His presence is just the first part. Amen. But after that, 
the Bible says that you will arise. Amen. That's where the action begins. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you this. When you talk about seeking God, going after God's heart, that is the first person where action begins with you. Amen. You do an effort to find the glory of God. Amen. You do an effort to find the power of God. Amen. But after when you have found God, it is time for God action. Amen. It's time for God to act. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you this. You know, you can only see God who is available. You can't see God who is not there. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. People want to see God in their life. Amen. When they want to see God... You wonder what is the effort are they to, are they doing to make sure that the glory of God is present? Amen. What is the effort are they doing? Are they what is the price are they paying? Amen. People forget that they can't see God who is not there. Amen. First of all, in order to see the glory of God, in order to see the power of God. First of all, he must be there. Amen. Then once he is there, you will be able to experience his power. Amen. You will be able to experience his presence. You will be experience, able to experience his blessing. When God is what? When God is there. Amen. Then people want to, to rob it. And when God is not there, after that, they just begin to experience God's blessings. Amen. And they just want to experience what he can do. No! You know, first of all, you go after God's heart. Amen. As the Bible says that in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Amen. All these things shall be given to you as well. But that means, then what you do first of all, you go after God's heart. And when God is there, after when God is there, then God will begin to move. To lift you higher. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. That's why the Bible says that in verse number 4, lift lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons are coming from afar. Your daughters are carried on the heap. Then the Bible is saying that first of all, once you have arrived, he will make sure that everything that belongs to you comes to you. Amen. You know, sometimes there are a lot of things that belong to you. Those lots of things that are belongs to you, you find that they are not with you, but you are not even aware. There are a lot of blessings that God has given you. Sometimes these are physical blessings, sometimes they are spiritual blessings, but you are not aware that these are your blessings. Then there are people who are like that. They are too blessed. You may find that uh, somebody is enjoying your money. You may find that somebody is enjoying your car. You may find that somebody is enjoying your house. But you are not even aware. But once you have sought God, God knows what belongs to you. God knows what are the resources that you have allocated to you. Then after that, when you have sought him, he will be the one who goes and fetch everything that belongs to you. Amen. That's why the Bible says, lift up your eyes. Look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons, your sons are coming from afar. Amen. 
Your daughters are carried in the heap. Amen. Some of those sons is the sons you don't even know. Amen. Some of those sons are sons that you never thought that you will ever see. Amen. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. But as you go after God, God, the Bible says that He will make sure that they come to you. Amen. You will become a money magnet. Amen. You will become a blessing magnet. Amen. You will become a jobs magnet. Amen. You will never lack any good Amen. thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that in verse number five. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the... The Bible says that the wealth on the sea will be brought to you. And to you the riches of the nations will come. The Bible says that. Because you will be seeing the blessing coming to you. You will be seeing what belongs to you coming to you this time. Amen. The Bible says that your heart will throb and swell with with joy. You will be happy. Amen. Uh, Who is not going to be happy when their things are coming back? Eh? When those cars are coming, that belongs to you. When those houses are coming, that belongs to you. Amen. When those jobs which are coming belongs to you. Amen. Are you not going to be happy when you are, when that money is coming now to your bank account? Amen. Because I want to tell you this. When you talk about even money, your money is already here in this world. Amen. When you talk about God blessing you with money, money is not in heaven. It does not, it does not really rain from heaven. Amen. Sometimes you may find that your money is already here in this world. It's just that it's in the wrong hands. Amen. Some people have your money. But when God belongs to you, money begins to do what? Money begins to change hands. Amen. Even some cars. That belongs to you, just that they are in somebody's garage. Amen. Even some houses. Amen. You may think, no, some of the houses, some some properties, other people are owning them. Some land, other people are owning them. But Amen. some of those houses belongs to you. Amen. For example, when I sometimes you say that you buy a new property, it's a property that somebody used to own. Remember after buying this other house and after finding, ah, they've built this house so long, but it's so beautiful. And this man was owning my house. But after that, when you've bought that house, that house belongs to you. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Then there are some people who are owning things that does not belong to them. Those things belong to you. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. But don't worry. Power will change hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Power will change your hands. Ownership will change. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Yes, power will change hands. Ownership papers will change hands. Amen. Let me tell you that. I wanna, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 23. It's one of my favorite verses, verse number 25. The Bible says that to worship the Lord your God and these blessings will be on your food and your water and I will take away sicknesses from among you. And the Bible says that in verse number 27, Having passed verse number 26, I will send terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. Amen. 
Verse number 28, the Bible said that I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites out of your way. Amen. The Bible said that, you know, God is saying that he will send terror and confusion. Every nation you encounter. Amen. For you to take over. Amen. For you to possess. Amen. Everything that belongs to you. Amen. So that those who are possessing what you are supposed to possess, they will be confused. Amen. And after being confused, they will leave what belongs to you so that you can possess what belongs to you easily. Amen. Without a struggle in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you need to possess? Do you want to possess a job? Do you want to possess a business? I see people leaving position to make way for us in Jesus' name. Amen. I see people leaving houses, leaving cars, so that you can possess them. Amen. So that we can possess them by fire, by force, in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember this other day, we were busy viewing houses. Yes, we are viewing houses. This uh, real estate agent said that, ah, there are a lot of houses now that are vacant. They say that there are a lot of these houses that are vacant, that the reason now is because of COVID. There are a lot of houses that are vacant. That's what the, the real estate agent says. But sometimes some people vacate so that you can what? you can be able to possess. Amen. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Sometimes somebody have to vacate so that you can what? You can possess. Amen. I, I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Okay, let us go down. The Bible say that I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the, the Hittites out of your way. Verse number 29, the Bible says that, But I will not drive them out in a single year, because the land will become desolate and the wild animals be too num numerous for you. Verse number 30. Little by little I will drive them out because you out before you until you increase enough to take possession of the land. Amen. The Bible says that, you know, God is saying that what he's going to do? He's going to hey to drive out those who were possessing what belongs to you. And the Bible says, as he is driving them out, he says, he's not going to drive them out at once. <laughs> he, says that he will drive them little by little. Because the land might become so big for you. So I'm waiting and I'm, God is saying, I'm developing your capacity. Amen. So that you can you can have a capacity to manage Amen. big lands, Amen. big properties, Amen. large amount of money. Amen. So that hey, what you have to possess might not be too big for you. Amen. Because sometimes you know you have not developed enough because sometimes you have to prove unto God that uh, I have developed enough. I have grown enough in order that I can possess the millions that you are about to give to me. Amen. Sometimes God wants to give you a lot of money. As he's about to give you a lot of money. But you realize that you can't manage the little that he's giving you. 
How do you prove that you can manage what God is giving you? When you are able to even tithe based on what God is giving you. Hey, your ability to act in accordance to scriptures as God is blessing you is a way to prove unto God I will be able to manage what you are giving to me. But if you can't act in accordance with the scriptures, when God is giving, blessing you, it is also a proof that you are showing God that I can't manage that you are giving me. Amen. You are not matured enough Amen. to take care of what God is giving you. Amen. When somebody begins to have a lot of excuses why they can't do what God have to do, what God wants them to do. They can't be in the presence of God. You ask why? Because of a job that you have given me. Uh -uh. God wants to expand you. God wants to bless you. And you must be able to prove how faithful you can be. Amen. And not come out with excuses why you can't tithe. Amen. Why you can't be in the presence of God? Amen. Being able to show God. Amen. Oh God, you can trust me with money. Amen. You can trust me with business. Amen. Then sometimes because when you are faithful with little, you are showing God that you can handle much. Amen. But for God to be able to trust you with much. It is after when you have proved to God and you have shown God that you can trust me with little. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the more you are faithful with little, God can do what? Can give you much. Hallelujah. Amen. Say fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Fire, yeah, 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 yeah. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. The Bible says that in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse number 1. The Bible says, What I'm saying is that as long as a hair is underage, he is not different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subjected to a guardian and trustees until the time set by his father. So, then the Bible is saying that, you see, he said that what I'm saying is that as long as the heir, who is the heir? When you talk about the hair, it's, it's the same thing when the, when the father have got a son whom he want to to he want him to inherit what he owns. When he want to this son to inherit what he owns, but he realize the son is still young. Even though he bought this beautiful car and he think that this car will be this this young man will inherit when he grow up. But he realized this young man is so young. He can't give him a car. He's still a baby. He will cry the car. But that as long as he's young, he's not different. The Bible says he's not different. He's not different from a slave. Because a slave is not a son. He can't have that car. The son, because he's still young, he can't have that car. Amen. A child of God, because he's not showing maturity unto the things of God, even though God wants to give him all. God is forced to limit a bit. Amen. And this person is praying, crying, Oh God, give me a bigger car. Give me a bigger house. Give me more money. And God is looking and saying, ah, ah. God is saying that I've given him this little so that I can see how faithful can you be with little. Amen. And then you can, God can be able to expand your horizon. Amen. 
as long as you are faithful with little, you can be trusted with much. It's a principle of the kingdom. Amen. Jesus Christ gives. Jesus gives a parable of talent. What was the parable of talent all about? The one is given five. The other one is given two. The other one is given one. But when they come back, what is he trying to see? When he come back, he's trying to see, is this one able to profit what he has been given? Is this one able to be faithful based on what he has been given? Amen. Or he cannot be faithful with little. Amen. Those who are faithful with little, their authority was expanded. Then so God, God, you want to see you, you, you know, God want to see us proving that we can be trusted with little so that he can give us much. God want to give you much. He want to give you more property. He want to give you more money. He want to give you more cars. He want to give you in every sphere of your life. That's why as a child of God, you must know it is important to be faithful in the little that God has given you. Amen. Because what God has given you is just a test. Amen. It's just a test. It's just trusting. You want to see how can you be, can you be trusted? Amen. How matured are you? Amen. Then once you are matured, God will begin to open more doors for you. Amen. And as a child of God, long for maturity. Amen. Long for maturity. Want to grow up Amen. into the things of God. Amen. Want to grow up Amen. to be able to practice the principles of the word, the principles of the kingdom. And when God has seen that you can be faithful, you can be trusted, he will expand your horizon. Amen. Otherwise, a little child, even though he can cry for the keys of his father, if that father has got a right mind, he will never give that child a car. He will buy him a toy. Play with toy until you have got some sense in your, in your mind. You know, you know, that's why even the laws of the country say that you can begin to drive when you're 18 years old. Because they know that an 18 year old have, have, have some a bit of some sense. Amen. We can ex, we can expect a bit of responsibility. Amen. But anything longer than that, no. Also in the kingdom is like that. There are certain lessons that you need. Some people who have shown maturity. Is that, that in the spirit you don't show maturity because how old you are. You show by your maturity in how much can you practice the word. Amen. How much can you practice the word? Amen. How much can you obey? Amen. How much? Amen. How much obedient can you be? The more you show that, the more show, the more you prove and show that you are matured. There are certain things that a matured Christian does, Amen. and there are certain things that the baby Christians do. Amen. No matter how old they are in the physical, Amen. somebody can be eight years in the spirit and still be a baby Christian. Amen. Then some people are just a baby Christian. They are not matured enough. Amen. Then how much matured are you? Oh, Barakriya Frosakia Talabahaki. We are about to pray, asking God, help me to be matured. Help me to grow up. I want to grow up so that I can be trusted with the things that the Father wants to give. Because there are things that the Father wants to give you. There are blessings that the Father wants to give you. Amen. If we go down in the, same, in the same book, the Bible says that wealth on seas will be brought to you. Amen. To you, riches of nation will come. 
there are riches that are in nations that the God wants to bring to you even over the sea. Amen. The Bible says that the heads of the camel in your land, young camels of the Midianites, Midian, and Alpha, the bearing of gold, bearing gold, Isis proclaiming the praise of God. Amen. When the Bible talks about camel, don't be expecting camels today. He's talking about the there is a Mercedes Benz written your name. Amen. There is a whatever car that you need written your name. Rolls Royce written your name. Be- beautiful things written your name out there that are just waiting you to grow up in the things of the kingdom and God will bring the best of the land towards you. Remember who is our father, who is our daddy. Our daddy is the creator of heaven and earth. He owns it all. If he owns it all, he can give you the best house. He can give you the best business. He can give you the best position. He can give you the best cars. He's unlimited creator. Amen. He owns it all. Amen. And all that he wants you to do is to prove how much what are you you seeing you growing in the things of the spirit, seeing you growing in the things of the kingdom, and he will make sure that all these good things shall be added to you. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Bible even says that all the Kedah flocks, said Kedah flocks, will be gathered to you. Amen. The realms of Nebath will save you. Amen. They will be accepted as offering on my altar because when you are grown up, you are not having these things for yourself. Amen. When you have grown up in the spirit, when they give you those realms, when they give you that offering, is the more the kingdom prosper, is the more the kingdom advance. Because when you are mature enough, you have become a kingdom financer. You are not, hey, I want you to show, I want you to understand it. You are not just getting rich. You are, you are not just getting rich like the people of the world. You are getting rich for the kingdom's sake. Amen. God knows that everything he put in your hands, in your hands, it belongs to him. Amen. He knows that you are the manager of the, of the resources of the kingdom. Amen. That when they brought, God brought them into your hands, they will be used effectively. Amen. On this way, God can trust you. Amen. You are trustable. Amen. But if someone someone is not trustable how god how is it that god can entrust them with much amen. the bible says to whom much is given much is required amen god wants to give you much amen he wants to give you much amen hallelujah amen he wants to give you much because he can trust you you are matured enough hallelujah You must be able to prove that you are out of the stage of the world. Amen. You're not like this youth. Amen. Who receive who receive one or two breakthroughs and they lose their mind. And they lose their character. You have proved yourself. You are matured. Money can't make you drive, cannot drive you crazy. Hey, you are matured enough. He drives you crazy. Amen. When you are mature enough, God Almighty drives you crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. He drives you crazy. Amen. Whatever comes into your hands Amen. are His. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that foreigners will build your walls. Their kings will serve you. Hey, though in anger I struck you, but in favor I will show you compassion. The Bible says that. Amen. He loves you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Then tonight we're about to pray, asking God, help me to be matured. I want to be matured. Help me to be matured. I want to be matured. That you can trust me more. 
that you can trust me. I want to know you are the 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy the Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Be with us all. Surely goodness and love. Surely goodness and love shall follow me. Shall follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say all is well. All is well. All is well. All is well. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say to us tonight, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Bye bye, everybody. Have a blessed morning, day, and afternoon, and night. Amen. Bye bye.